What's up? So to explain the etiology of essential thrombocytemia, first of all we have to recall how jactokinase is formed and what is the function of jactokinase. On chromosome 9 located gene which is called JAK2 gene, JAK2 gene encodes JAK2 kinase protein. In order to understand what happens in polycythemia, we have to know how from gene we get a protein. So basically we have to recall how protein synthesis occurs. We have a central dogma in molecular biology, DNA RNA protein. This dogma tells that the genetic information in chromosomal DNA molecule has to be copied to RNA molecule and carried to ribosomes where proteins produced. And only proteins can physically provide the function and regulation of the crucial metabolical processes. It sounds pretty badass. How is this important right now? It's not, I'm sorry. So basically, JAK2 gene on chromosome 9 is a number of nucleotides that form DNA molecule. DNA molecule consists of two strands, its coding strand and non-coding strand. And to use this information in the gene, information must be carried to ribosomes where proteins are produced. So DNA molecule for this purpose makes a copy of the gene in form of parametric RNA molecule. This process called transcription. And this results in production of pro-matrix RNA molecule. Let's suppose that our sequence of nucleotides located in a coding region that called exon. So this sequence of nucleotides will not be removed by RNA splicing and in form of matrix RNA molecule will be delivered to ribosomes. Ribosomes read nucleotide sequence in matrix RNA molecule in codons and include complementary to that codon amino acid. In this case, it's valine and glycine. Let's suppose that valine is amino acid in 617 position, and a particular amount of amino acids form protein. In our case, this protein is JAK2 kinase. The function of JAK2 kinase is to activate cellular pathways that are responsible for cellular proliferation, and activation of pathways occurs by phosphorylation. In order to activate pathway, JAK2 kinase uses ATP molecule. By ATP molecule, it phosphorylates proteins in this pathway, and as a byproduct, ADP is released. Important that JAK2 kinase involved primarily in regulation of myeloid cells. To explain what are myeloid cells, we have to know that hematopoiesis can be subdivided on myelopoiesis and lymphopoiesis and myelopoiesis can be subdivided on erythropoiesis that produce red blood cells, thrombopoiesis that produce megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed, monocytopoiesis that produce monocytes, and finally granulocytopoiesis that produce neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. Also some pathways are more specific to a certain type of cell. For example, JAK2 kinase by activation of JAK stat pathway stimulate mostly the production of red blood cells. By activation of PI3K AKTA pathway, JAK2 kinase stimulates the production of megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed. By activation of RAS pathway, it stimulates the production of granulocytes and monocytes, so this results in production of monocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Important that JAK2 kinase serves as a conductor. It receives signal by cytokines and only then begin to activate intracellular pathways. Recall that because cytokines have protein structure and proteins are polar molecules, they cannot diffuse into the cell. They require some receptor that on the surface of the cell will receive signal and transmit the signal into the nucleus. So when cytokines act on cytokine receptor on cellular surface, it requires JAK2 kinase to deliver the signal into the nucleus. So basically, JAK2 kinase is just the conductor of the signal. In normal condition, JAK2 kinase cannot decide to increase the mitotic rate or to leave it as it is. Because JAK2 kinase do not know how to regulate, this enzyme just phosphorylates or remains passive. They can't think, they can't imagine, most of them can't even spell, they just run things. But we have a certain organs that provide selective regulation of blood cell count. For example, kidneys, by secretion of erythropoietin, mainly provide activation of JAK-STAT pathway, and thereby provide increase in production of red blood cells. 
so by this they regulate red blood cell level. Liver by secretion of thrombopoietin mainly force jectokinase to activate PA3K AKT pathway, as it stimulates the production of megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed. So by this liver regulates platelets level. And bone marrow microenvironment by secretion of granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor force jectokinase to activate RAS pathway that cause increase in production of granulocytes and monocytes. So, as we see, because organs that regulate blood cell count cannot act directly, they secrete cytokines, and cytokines activate jectokinase and in turn jectokinase stimulate cell proliferation rate. Grow better! So, for example, if the amount of platelets decrease, liver sense that the amount of platelets is low, so liver tissue secretes thrombopoietin that acts on thrombopoietin receptor and this results in stimulation of jectokinase. Thrombopoietin forces jectokinase to activate PI3K AKT pathway, so in response to this the production of megakaryocytes begin to increase. And because from megakaryocytes platelets are formed, with increasing amount of megakaryocytes the production of platelets increase. So by this we maintain the normal amount of platelets in our blood. Important that when platelets reach normal values, liver begin to decrease the production of thrombopoietin. So now the stimulation of jectokinase will decrease. So the stimulation of PI3K AKT pathway will decrease, thereby the production of platelets will decrease. And by this we maintain normal amount of platelets in our blood. And everything is tipped top until mutation in Jack to Gina can. What's wrong with this one? Oh, nothing, Tommy. It's tip top. It's just I'm not sure about the color. The most common type of mutations called single nucleotide polymorphism. Basically, this mutation substitute one nucleotide in DNA structure with another nucleotide. And this simple substitution, in our case, will have a dramatic consequences. So, in DNA molecule, due to a single nucleotide polymorphism, guanine is substituted by thymine. Thereby, a non-coding strand will be adenine, in matrix RNA molecule will be uracil. And now the triplet triple uracil encodes not valine but phenylalanine, which is totally different amino acid. So mutation in DNA molecule results in production of jectokinase that has valine in 617 position. Now, why is this mutation is so dangerous? Recall that in normal condition, jectokinase is active only when it receives signal from the cytokines. But this mutation causes persistent activation of jectokinase. So now the state of jectokinase is not determined by the cytokines. With this mutation, jectokinase becomes constantly active and basically begin to function on its own. And interesting that this mutation causes disproportional activation of intracellular pathways. Such mutated jectokinase cause mild activation of RAS pathway, and this results in mild increase in production of monocytes and all granulocytes, particularly in basophils. It causes moderate activation of PA3K AKT pathway, this results in moderate increase in megakaryocytes and thereby in platelet production. And the most significant activation occurs to jet start pathway, that results in huge increase in red blood cells in the blood. So until this point, it's basically the pathogenesis of polycythemia. But the specific feature of essential thrombocytemia is the presence of additional mutations. That's interesting. So in essential thrombocytemia, we have jet 2 mutation, and on top of that, we have additional mutations. And nowadays, we have two most common mutations that are associated with essential thrombocytemia. It's a mutation in color reticulin gene that is present in 20-40% to 40 of patients. 
and the mutation in MPL gene that is present in 5-10% to of patients. Also, it can be another mutation, but these two are the most common. So the logic here is that these two mutations modify the phenotype of the disease that is produced by JEK2 kinase mutation. In simple words, JEK2 kinase mutation is the dominant mutation that gives rise to the disease, because this mutation causes hyperproduction of myeloid cells. And these additional mutations that are present in essential thrombocytemia are sort of weak. They cannot cause the disease itself, but they can modify the pre-existed mutation, which is mutation in JEK2 kinase. So the question here is that how they modify. What are you doing? Thinking. With vodka. It's a central nervous system depressant, so yes, with vodka. So let's take colorticulin mutation. Colorticulin mutation causes hyperactivation of pathways that produce megakaryocytes. SPI3K AKT pathway, and this basically shifts the production capacity of mutated JEK2 kinase from red blood cells to megakaryocytes. So, as a result, the amount of megakaryocytes inside the bone marrow greatly increases. And because from megakaryocytes platelets produced, it causes significant increase in platelets in peripheral blood. And the presence of more than 450 platelets in peripheral blood is the first major criteria of essential thrombocytemia. Also on bone marrow biopsy, the hyperproliferation of megakaryocyte lineage with fully mature enlarged megakaryocytes constitutes the second criteria. Also we can call this criteria megakaryocytes hyperplasia. And the third criteria is the presence of JEK2 kinase mutation in combination with colorticulin mutation or MPL mutation. And the presence of these three criteria permits you to make a diagnosis of essential thrombocytemia. Great. Fine. Yep. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 